Good morning, Jesse. How are you? Good morning, Kelly. What are we doing today? We, this is super exciting. I'm really excited. Um, Kyle, one of our developers with Flywater Solutions, has created a label maker plugin that's going to revolutionize label making. Um, that is for sure, because now we can do a lot more functionality, can't we? Yes, we can. You know those libraries that use a sheet of labels, but there's different sizes. So maybe they've got one spine label and two barcodes because they're putting different information on the, the book, but there's all in one sheet. We can accommodate that now. Very exciting. Very exciting. Now, we are going to just talk about the process. Um, this is a plugin, so we'll touch upon how to do that um, for our partners. However, at any point, understand that if you're one of our partners, please submit a ticket. If this is something you want help with, we would be happy to install the plugin, do the setup that's needed. But this is a good overview on what the functionality is. Perfect. And if it's one of our partners that are watching, feel free to submit a ticket and we will install that plugin for you. Absolutely. So if you are not familiar, we do have a um, GitHub site that has all our plugins um, that have been created that kind of work correlation with, with the Koha, so we're not affecting Koha code. Um, so I believe it's just under a label maker right there. Um, so you would just download that and install it. And again, if you need assistance with that, please let us know. Once you do that process, or once we do that process for you, all, if any, plugins are found in the Koha administration page. So I'm going to pop over to my Koha administration page, and it's on the far left down here under Manage Plugins. Now, Kelly, can we access this from the Tools page as well under Plugins? There are certain ones that can, but I always find it's easier to go to the admin because then all your plugins. Perfect. Some of them aren't seen because they're by class. Perfect. So you can see I have the Label Maker plugin here. Um, way over to the, the right, we have an actions button, and the actions are run tool and uninstall. So as this is your first time, we're going to actually run the tool where you're going to see the setup, um, the different templates and layouts that have already been predetermined um, on this plugin. Perfect. So just like the label maker, we have templates, we have layouts, and printer profiles. What I love about what Kyle's done with this plugin is he's integrated the same terminology and it plays into the label creator in the tools menu. So our library staff can still go in and create a list or a batch of items, numbers, or barcodes to generate a batch of labels that they want to print and then come in here and print that batch. Absolutely, absolutely. Yep, so right up at the top, you have this print batch. So it's actually going to access any batches that you have in your label creator. So awesome. that is still the same. Um, our first tab here is the template. So as I said, some of these are predetermined in your system. So Kyle has gone ahead and created an Avery standard label, which is your standard um, spine label. And then he's also gone ahead and done this basic label. And this is the basic label that includes a spine label and two barcodes. And we'll show you how that looks. If you don't have a label here, again, please feel free if you're one of our partners to submit a ticket and we'd be happy to add in any templates that you would like. We also have a, a wizard that just like in the reports that can walk you through some of the steps if you want to try it on your own. I know we have some adventurous librarians using Koha that like to do things on their own or at least try. So you do have the functionality here in this wizard. So you can choose to create a template. The template is going to look a lot like your label creator template. Um, so you're going to Say you're going to give it a name, how many labels, and those values. Sorry, my screen just kind of went crazy. Uh, those values. So here um, we actually have three field values, just like we did in the label creator. So you can put a call number, title, author, um, just like we did on the um, label creator. And what's nice about this wizard is 
the field value you get a drop down in the regular label creator it get, kind of just gives you a few examples but this is nice because it's actually pulling the items table and then it tells you the exact column um, from that table as well as the biblio uh, table that you can pull additional fields from so this makes it a lot easier you have a lot more examples that you can populate absolutely absolutely and you do see just like with the label creator we had um, the ability to determine which barcode we're using so we have our barcode types one of the new ones I saw was a QR code, and we gave that as a little test drive, and that was pretty cool if people are using QR codes. I know, that's awesome. So we have that template. Now we also have the layout, um, the wizard layout. So the layout is going to be what your label looks like. So um, gutters, which I don't think we use that terminology in Label Creator, but you are, your height from the top of the label, the gaps between the labels, the actual width and the height of the label, and then the distance between the columns. So a lot of the same information you'd enter into our label creator. Once, if you decide to use the wizard, once you do that, that information will be turned into this fun um, HTML and CSS code for you. Beautiful. Now it does the work for you and you don't have to worry about knowing how to do this yourself. Exactly. Exactly. Um, now, if you do come in here and you look at this and you're like, what does this mean? Again, please, if we provide you support, come in here and submit a ticket because some of this may look a little um, daring uh, to you. So we'd be happy to help you set that up um, for those unique labels, layouts uh, that you have. One more thing I want to say. Um, for those people that like to play around. Um, if you wanted to adjust or try to adjust one of the templates that are in there, we have an action button way over to the right and you have the copy button. So you know that this is a working one, just like in reports, you know you have a working report and you wanna tweak it a little bit, you can always go and copy that code and start kind of tweaking with it. So maybe your layout or your template needs just a little bit more information you can certainly do that yeah but if you are wicked adventurous you could edit it right from i would always copy in my opinion <laughs> okay so um we talked about the templates jesse the layouts yep. of course we have printer profiles which we also had in our label creator if you um, know that your printer skews a little bit you always have that ability to add that here the offset and the creep the offset in the creep. Lots of words. Gutter, creep. <laughs> On Monday morning. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and give this a whirl. This is where we haven't adjusted anything Kyle has done in the plugin. We're just going to give this um, a whirl. And as Jesse said, any of your batches that are in your label creator, you can access here. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit print batch. And just like in Label Creator, we're gonna pick our template, we're gonna pick our layout and that batch number. So that's probably one thing you may wanna note from your Label Creator is which batch you're actually using. Um, if you had a printer print profile set up and where you wanted to start on the label page. And I will we'll just jump in and say the batch is going to tell you the number, just like Kohan numbers everything in the system, that first number will be the number of the batch and then the parentheses number will be how many labels are in that particular batch. So we'll just stick with this Avery standard um, template and layout for the first go. So you can see here that we have um, our title, it's a barcode, and I'm thinking this must be our Biblio number. I didn't really look at it that closely, but I believe it is. Or the, yep, or the item number maybe? Yeah, probably your item number. Yep. So you can see we have a, a nice um, layout just like we would have on our um, label creator. And if you didn't want that item number to show, you could absolutely go into the template and remove that from the template toolkit and take that out. Yep. Yep. Okay. So now let's go ahead and use that basic because that's the one a lot of libraries want to utilize is the, um, the various sizes of your label sheets. So we'll go ahead, we'll keep that same batch and we'll just change it to this basic template and this basic layout. Okay, what I Amazing. love, what 
Kyle has done um, as a, an example, um, he's added color. So if you did need to go in and adjust any of this, he has it labeled that this is the red part of your label, this is the green part, and this is the blue part. Again, left, center, right is also noted. Um, this is a good test. And if you're ready to go ahead, we'll, you can remove that code or we can remove that coloring code he's added for you. That's perfect for when you're first setting it up. Yeah, absolutely. I love that he's done that. So you can see we have our spine label and then we have the two barcodes. Okay, what do you think, Jesse? This is pretty cool, right? This is awesome. Um, you know, this is a long time. We've had a lot of libraries that do have that three layout um, for labels that they used for so long. You know, the spine label is a perfect example. And even if they're not doing the barcode, those labels that they can put either on the back side of a DVD or the inside of a book that has the library's name and, and information. And, and, and this is a long time in coming. So this is really exciting. You know, Kelly, why don't we just jump into the regular label creator so we can show them how to set up a batch for libraries that may not have used that functionality before. That way they can just get a, a quick look for that. Okay, great, good idea. So we'll go into the tools module and in that central in the catalog center, we have this label creator. I'm gonna pop over to my label creator and then I do have the ability to add, create a new label batch or if I had any existing batches, I can manage those batches. So let's go ahead and go um, with a new label batch. You can add this by barcode. Um, you can go ahead and scan. If you have a card of books, scan those barcodes in that you need to create spine labels or barcodes for. Um, you would go ahead and add those in. You can also um, enter them by item number if you wanted to. And that add items button, I love because if you are doing it by a certain date, so if you want to look at everything you cataloged today, you can say date added on or after date and then add it on before date. So that's really nice if you don't have the book sitting next to you and you just wanna do everything that you did today, this will absolutely give you a nice list and it will pull those in for you, um, dependent by those dates. So that's perfect. That lets you select which ones you wanna add in. If you're doing specific branches, you can do that as well. So you could just select certain ones. Yep. So add check, so I grabbed some that we had cataloged in the last few days. Now we can seat them over here and you're gonna just hit those add items. So now we have created this batch and it tells me it's batch number three. Um, if I wanted to add, remove any of those and I can export a full batch right from the label creator, or I can go over into the plugin and use this batch number three. Excellent. Great. Okay. All right. Another good overview. I'm sure there's plenty of people that are out there to um, getting ready to print uh, for those multiple layouts that they have on their um, labels. Mm -hmm. Yep, we'll have a blog. We'll upload this video onto YouTube, and then we'll create a blog post with some step-by-step -step instructions for all those people that like to have those step by steps in addition to our beautiful voices um, through this process. Of course. And then um, we'll meet back again and we'll go through a little more um, detailed run through of setting this up. So those of you who are familiar with using template toolkit um, and HTML, and if you want to take this um, on yourself, we'll go through and show you how to do that as well. Sounds fun and a little scary, Jesse, but we'll do it. Maybe we can have a guest um, join us, uh, Lucas, maybe, um, to talk a little bit about setting those up. So maybe we can get a guest with us. Oh, that's a great idea. Okay, we'll stay tuned next Monday. All right. Have a good week, y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye, Kelly. Bye.